Is the Riemann hypothesis one of the millennium problems? Uh, yes, I believe so. There's there several, but it's one of the ones where the truth or falseness of the Riemann hypothesis or the extended Riemann hypothesis is one of the one of the most wanted things within number theory. There's a lot of things that are resting on or waiting for that uh, thing to be determined. There's a very deep thing of this zeta function, these infinite reciprocals numbers, that um, the zeros of these particular things have a, have a deep uh, association with prime numbers themselves and the distribution thereof. So Fermat's last theorem was the one that had all the attention in, out of all the millennium problems. And now that that's been solved, I think all the all the attention has kind of moved down to the Riemann hypothesis. And it, it'll be the hardest way to win a million dollars. But if you want to become a millionaire, that's that's one of the ways. What's the relationship between the Riemann hypothesis and the distribution of prime numbers? The Riemann hypothesis has uh, a, a actually a fairly, fairly deep relationship, it turns out, quite surprising, between zeros of a function, when a function evaluates to zero, and, and prime numbers. But you have to start off with saying, well, what's the, what is the Riemann hypothesis? It's a conjecture that this thing called the zeta function has zeros only either at negative even integers in the complex plane or in complex numbers with a real part being one half. And the ones that are on the even integers are called the trivial zeros. The complex zeros are the ones on the on the line. So if you plotted the Riemann zeta hypothesis and noted where it was zero in a complex plane, so x would be the real numbers and y would be the imaginary numbers, the hypothesis states that the non-trivial zeros that are found between where the real part is between zero and one only lie along the line of one half. And if that is indeed the case, if that turns out to be true, then Riemann has an exact formula for the number of primes less than x. Now, so what? Well, if I had an exact formula, I could tell you exactly how many primes were less than x. Then all I have to do is calculate that formula for different values of x. And when I find the formula that goes up by one, I got a prime. Yeah, and, and for the listeners, if that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what can. Yes. I, I mean, the relationship between these two is truly, truly mysterious and absolutely fascinating. And again, I believe the Riemann hypothesis as well is a millennial problem. Uh, One million dollars to those who can solve it, which again might be the hardest million dollars you've ever earned. And I think a lot of people are trying to find zeros outside of that range, right? Yes. Yeah, isn't it one of those things which sound like it's easier to be proved by, um, by contradiction? So by showing that the zeta function does return a zero, um, in places that are outside of those two number lines, where the negative number line on the whole numbers and the uh, half number line on the y-axis. Yeah, so finding the counterexample has, has so far failed. doesn't mean that it might not exist, but it at least is pretty good. I mean, another thing that, that's really nice, the zeta function, the zeros give you the where to fix Gauss's logarithmic integral function and allow you to make it exact. And at that point, you could you could find primes through the Riemann hypothesis. It, it is also, it puzzles me how certain numbers, which we seemed, seem to crop up everywhere, like pi. And, it, and it's, it's somewhat telling that there is an underlying system here that we haven't really identified. Like for pi to crop up in random places, it almost seems to suggest more about us discovering concepts in mathematics uh, rather than inventing them. Yes. Pi is certainly involved. The value of the zeta function at 2 is pi squared over 6. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the, the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, so 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared out to infinity, that turns out to be pi squared over 6. Um, there's another interesting thing. If you look at the, the zeta function of minus 1, that turns out to be negative 1 twelfth. That's why, yeah, that's why some people say, well, you could pretend that the sum of the, of the integers out to infinity is negative 1 over 12. Well, that's, actually, that's not quite true. The zeta function at minus 1 which would be the sum of the integers, um, evaluates to negative 1 over 12. 
Yeah, and that's quite re it's quite a remarkable result. But you have to be very clear about how you construct such a statement when discussing uh, that result, negative 1 over 12. You can easily poetically and socially engineer such a statement to be nothing but misleading. But uh, this number does mysteriously crop up in mathematics and physics quite often, uh, including uh, areas like string theory. Yes, yes. There is here a, a really nice, I'll, I'll post it in the chat here. There's a really nice thing on the zeta function and on Wikipedia that's, that's, that's fairly correct. And, you know, I, there, there are essentially fun stuff. Like, for example, the, the zeta function at, at zero is negative one half. You know, the zeta function at, at infinity is one. So it, it has some, some really interesting properties there, but it's bound up in, in the notion of primes and, and, and how the number line is constructed and uh, in, in surprisingly, surprisingly deep ways. The Riemann hypothesis is so fascinating that it, it truly warrants a podcast in itself. And the extended Riemann hypothesis uh, gets into a lot more complex stuff and has relationships with prime numbers, such as the density of prime numbers, but... Um, perhaps another time we can discuss that.